everybody, welcome to another Be Built by Brozer. Uh, I'm here, I'm a little bit under the weather today, so uh, you might hear a little scratchy voice. But I'm here with my good friend, Silvio Samuel, and I'm so proud to be working with him towards the 2020 season. And uh, we're gonna do some quads uh, today, and we're gonna do some new interesting training methods that we did with Silvio yesterday. He told me that he's all kinds of sore in his chest, so we're gonna try to do the same things for legs. And uh, like I said, I'm really proud to be working with this guy. We want to have a really good season in 2020. So, welcome, welcome to the show, man. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure, you know, working with people. I needed this step now to move forward. I still have a lot in my time to give out. But I needed the push. I needed somebody who could have really, really believe and understand me. And then know that uh, I still have some more. So I'm ready. Let's just keep on rolling. All right. See what it's Very coming. cool. It's going to be an exciting show. Let's do it. Okay, guys. So we have Silvio here on the leg press machine. The way we're doing the reps, he's going to come down in about two seconds under control. He holds the bottom for about one second. And then he's going to push up slowly over about four to five seconds. Now, the goal is to emphasize the positive contraction here. And he wants to do it as smoothly as he possibly can. Now, when we're lifting weights, most of the time, our bodies want to push or pull a weight as quickly as possible. So by using these very, very slow positives, we're forcing the body to do something that it's not used to. It's very, very difficult to get those smooth reps. One of Silvio's goals is to build bigger legs for next year. This is going to help him do it. I'm going to give him a spot. So now we're on the uh, lion squat machine. Great alternative to the regular barbell squat. And what we're doing, as you can see now, he's coming down on the negative in about four to five seconds. When he reaches the bottom, he's gonna push out as explosively as possible. So by going really, really slow on the negatives, the goal is to damage as many muscle fibers as possible. And then by exploding out of the bottom, we activate those fast twitch muscle fibers. So there's a dual action on this movement. And again, it's another way to hit the muscle differently from the first exercise where we emphasize the positive. Now I'm gonna give him a little spot, a little spot so we can get an extra rep or two. Okay, so now we're moving into one of my favorite exercises for especially separating and developing uh, the inner portion of the thigh, right in between the vastus lateralis and the vastus medialis, right up the center of the thigh. The sissy squat hits that like no other exercise. So what he's doing, as you can see, is he's grabbing a hold of the bar for stability. He's leaning back as far as he can, and he's rolling up on the balls of his feet and driving the hips forward so that we can maximize the stretch on the quads all the way up to the hip flexors. He's holding that bottom position for four seconds because we're emphasizing the stretch on this movement. First movement, we emphasize positive. The second movement negative, and now we're emphasizing the stretch. Now this exercise might not look like much because you're not, not using any weight, you're just using body weight. But trust me, if you do them correctly, and you hold that bottom position, and lean back, and just roll through up to the top, then you're gonna really, really feel it like no other movement hits that inner portion of the thigh, right in between, like I said, the vastus lateralis and the vastus medialis. Excellent movement. Okay guys, so now the final movement we're doing here is the good old leg extension. And the goal here now is to just do high reps over 20 in a piston-like fashion. So now we're not looking to hold any position of the rep. We just want to go up and down, force as much blood, oxygen, nutrients into the muscles as we can to help repairing those damaged fibers that we uh, took apart in the first three exercises. 
So you just want to go as far as you possibly can, take it to the final rep, and just absolutely just smash the thighs like you did there. Great set. All right, Big Sale. So, second real workout for you. We did, uh, what did we do yesterday? We did chest and shoulders. Right, and then today we did, you're doing legs. So, I just, you're sweating, so that's good. <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm sweating, I'm breathing profusely. I'm doing deep breath. Yeah, yesterday's training of the chest was really uh, extraordinary. I have the soreness, which shows more of effectiveness of separation of fibers, which is really what I want to work on right now. That will help in muscle growth. I feel it even through today. And like I told uh, uh, Rick, Eric, it is quite uh, amazing. And uh, I look forward to it. Then compared with uh, the differences we've done in the leg workout today, Believe me, it's, uh, it's not about heavy weight, but it's just about the basic technique that, you know, drive the muscles, and most especially the slow, space, uh, pause, and then pushing in a rhythm of five count. Uh, that really brings the more of uh, intensity into the uh, muscles. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you're used to uh, many different techniques to work out. You train with Charles, you train with Milo, you train with all the greats. Yeah. Um, and you can take a lot of volume after I've seen you do it. Right. This is very different. It's not as much volume as far. It's only eight sacks per body part. Um, what do you feel of the differences between the two? I'm curious. The basic difference about this is quite, you know, based on uh, the stand, the level of my training now, which has really touched basically every kind of training like you've mentioned. So I needed something to kind of uh, shock the muscle and then make bring a difference. And then uh, my muscle as I now was kind of like weaking, adapting to all kind of plateau. Yeah. Yes, but this this time around, it's really touch, and then you feel yeah. it. You feel that it is growing right away, and even the, sep the separation also, like we did the CC squat, it all drives into the you hips. Feel that all the way, yeah. yeah. Really and you lean already. It's going to be interesting to see yeah. uh, as you're starting your prep, because you're just getting starting your prep now for next year, right? You said? Right. It's for next year. Then I really, uh, I like like when, when we talk with. Uh, Eric and he told me is going into the competition, so which is basically what I love doing, yeah. and I've been doing it. But it's just the support now is what I really needed to push. Yeah, my, it'll be interesting stuff. as you as you start this new uh, journey because you're That's lean right. already, so the changes will come very quickly. I think. That's right. right. Fun for fun. Yeah, we're ready. Eric, what, uh, what's it like to train with Silvio? Well, it's great. I mean, I love I love teaching these techniques to everybody, but I love most of all to teach these techniques to people who've been training for a very long time. Uh, because most people have plateaued on what they do, um, and a lot of people, especially pro bodybuilders, are generally used to just a lot of volume. Uh, not necessarily intensity as much as volume. The intensity comes through the volume. Yes. Uh, but now, what I'm teaching Silvio and like Dave Hughes and some of the other pros that I've worked with is that you don't need to rely on heavy weights, which is great, especially when you're getting a little older and the joints have a lot of wear and tear on them. You don't have to rely on those heavy weights to grow anymore. Now what we're looking to do is increase the tension on the muscle. And the truth of the matter is, is the muscle has no clue how much weight it's lifting. It can't see the dumbbells. Uh, we just know that in our head. But if you can do the things like I show Silvio today, um, doing very slow positives, very slow negatives, very uh, slow uh, holds on the stretches, um, you can create so much tension in the muscle that the weight feels twice as heavy um, as it normally would, but there's not that stress on the joints. Plus also we're increasing the time under tension, which is so important uh, during every set, so that when normally uh, maybe you're doing a set of 10 reps and doing it in 20 seconds or so, now we're taking 40, 50, 60 seconds to do the set, which increases the time under tension, which means you don't have to do as many sets, which is why we could do lower volume. So Silvio is great uh, testament to this because he actually went through the first workout yesterday and he's already feeling soreness like he hasn't felt in a really, really long time. He's feeling his legs over only eight sets in places that he hasn't felt in a really long time. So my goal for him is to just create a new version of Silvio that he hasn't created in a long time by using these techniques and having him, since he doesn't want to do 212 anymore, he's full on open bodybuilding, we have to increase his size and make him look bigger than he actually is on stage. We've got to create the illusion. So I believe these training te techniques will do it. And Silvio, the great thing about him is he's willing to learn. He listens to what I tell him. He's not like trying to interject his open own things minded, in there. Open-minded. He's open-minded yeah. and he trusts me as a coach 
and that's all you can really ask for. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what we could do with them in 2020. What did you tell me a couple of years ago when you when you started training in this place? I told you a couple years ago <laughs> when I actually first met Silvio, and I was watching him train, and I knew that he wanted to come back. I actually said, Dave, you know who I would really like to work with? <laughs> Silvio. And I didn't even know Silvio that well back then, and I obviously became... He was a know, legend already, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, listen, I've like, seen yeah. him compete for many years. I was always a big fan of yeah, his. Yeah. But I said to myself, I feel like now that he's back, I could do a lot with him by teaching him my techniques, and now it's come to fruition. So I said, maybe God heard me. <laughs> Silvio, how does that make you feel when you hear this? <laughs> you know, it's an ask and it shall be given. God knows exactly how to draw good people with good spirit together, you know. It's a matter of time. At times we, we are led to go different ways in some ways, but at the end we still come back at once. This is Brothers in Iron, and definitely with the vibe, with the ghost vibe, good spirit, we all work together. And we've been, I, I, you guys, you Dave and uh, Eric has been a very big support of me. And uh, even though I have been working on my own, working with Charles, that you always lay down and then give me a heart of support that always I knew one day is going to draw nearer for us to work together and definitely is coming in. So I believe in destiny and I believe in God answering prayers. And definitely, it's all for our good. It's good, it's good for me, it's good for him. And this, this is Brothers in Ireland. So as long as he, he volunteered to say help, I am willing to work with and let's just take this to the next, next level. I'm so excited for 2020, you guys. We're going to have to you back on the show many times. Uh, thanks for watching, you guys. E, congratulations to both of you guys. And uh, 2020, 2020 will be a big year for both of you guys, I'm yeah. sure. Say your thing. Boom. That's right. <laughs> Boom. Exactly. <laughs>